Okay. Um, I'm a professor at the University of Southern California Institute for Creative Technologies. Uh, yeah, Trojans, yeah. Um, and uh, we run a virtual reality lab. We uh, create a range of clinical applications using simulation. Our work spans the area of cognitive, psychological, motor rehabilitation, and use of virtual humans for a wide variety of applications that involve interaction, social interaction, and so on. So we know that we have a significant mental health challenge with our conflicts in Iraq and Afghanistan. Next slide, please. Basically, what this says is, what is PTSD? The, the DSM diagnostic uh, criteria, you're confronted with a challenge, or an emotional experience that is beyond what you're normally used to dealing with. You've got a variety of things. You can hear about it happening to other people. It can happen to you. You can um, experience low-level trauma over time. Symptoms include hyperarousal, meaning you're, you're very easy to startle, uh, intrusive nightmares, flashbacks. You avoid going to places that remind you of the trauma or thinking about the trauma, and emotional numbing. So the Institute of Medicine, in the review of all the treatments for PTSD, whether it's pharmacological or psychotherapeutic, found that nothing works except for one treatment, and it's called exposure therapy. And exposure therapy, when done in the traditional format, encourages a patient with post-traumatic stress to imagine in the therapeutic context the things that haunt them the most about their traumatic experience and to narrate that experience as if it's happening now. And so you go through this repeatedly, you think about it, you talk about it, the therapist pushes you to confront it, and basically it's hard medicine for a hard problem. You know, it's kind of counterintuitive. You think, why would you make somebody that's been traumatized by something go back and confront it and re-experience it? But we find that by confronting and processing difficult emotional memories is the only way that you're gonna get beyond them. So the traditional format of doing this with PTSD has been found to be an evidence-based treatment um, in clinical care. We know that some people do not benefit from the traditional format. They have, a, they have problems visualizing uh, the traumatic event. They refuse to do it. They are, um, you know, just don't, some people are just not very good at going back to uh, the things that haunt them. It's part of the clinical condition. So what we've done is to create a virtual reality simulation of Iraq and Afghanistan that we can gradually take service members and veterans through at a pace that they can handle and gradually get them to confront and process difficult traumatic memories. Now originally we didn't have any funding to do this so we started by taking an Xbox game and since we didn't have any money, all we did was yank that street out of the game, and this is what a user would see wearing a virtual reality headset as they navigate through the scenario. Oh, this will work. Um, and I don't know if we can get this to go, but we could press buttons and have ambient sounds, gunfire, bring a helicopter into the scenario. Now this was done on weekends and at nights with programmers that, that wanted to make a difference. This was back in, 19, in, in 2003 before anybody thought we had a problem with this. Now we were fortunate, one of my former grad students, Greg Rieger, was being deployed. He was a psychologist, combat operational stress control team member. He took the system to Iraq and got feedback from people, boots on the ground, and basically hit the next button you can see some of the simulation content. And the clinician can make things happen in the simulation so we can begin to pace the graduated exposure that's necessary for the therapeutic process. So variety of tow in the water scenarios, driving through a safe US desert, um, an Iraq, Afghanistan city. Um, you could be in a turret. You could be driving the vehicle. Um, you could be attacked. Um, this is a con the clinician controller. What you saw on the last slide was the actual new content that um, we built. The clinician has a Wizard of Oz controller that can make things happen in real time in the simulation. And we have a smell machine. 
Uh, you can wear the head-mounted display on a helmet, and we have a base shaker platform, so you feel the concussive force of bombs or vibration of driving a Humvee and so on. So we try to do a multi-sensory stimulation. Next. And uh, soldiers told us that using a game pad was okay for driving the vehicle, but better to hold a weapon when you're on a foot patrol. You don't fire the weapon, but it was unnatural to hold a game pad like you're playing Call of Duty when you're on a foot patrol walking through a provocative environment. So we got this, these fake weapons, these mock-weighted uh, weapons that, that weighed the same as an M4, but with a little $20 thumb mouse so you could navigate while still holding on to the, uh, the weapon. Basically, the first study, that was th that's PTSD symptoms before treatment, after treatment, and a three-month follow-up. Next slide. Thank you. These are the individual data points of the 16 of 20 people that no longer met PTSD criteria at the end of treatment, and the four that didn't benefit. So one of the problems we have is we know that, um, that we have a challenge. We have... We have great evidence-based treatments that are available, but getting people to seek the treatment they can benefit from is fraught with a lot of problems. A lot of the problem is service members particularly don't want to admit that they have a problem. They don't want to seek help because they fear, they fear the stigma of you know, asking for help. So we believe, next slide, that if we reconceptualize therapy, Deliver it in a virtual reality format. It may be a treatment tool that appeals to a generation of service members that grew up digital, rather than the intensive face-to-face -face contact. Even though that naturally occurs in, the, in, in this format, we can deliver it in something they're more comfortable with. What we're doing is we're trying to put ourselves out of a job on the back end with treating PTSD by doing a better job on the front end, by delivering stress inoculation or resilience training using our virtual Iraq simulation. Um, next slide. And we're basically building an emotional obstacle course. So we put people through simulations. Uh, you can't read this. Um, basically, what this is saying is that the military is recognizing that we need to train or teach emotional coping strategies to people before they go into combat so we can reduce their risk for developing PTSD as a result of their combat. These are, what we do is we put people in interactive, immersive narratives. They wear a virtual reality headset, they're part of a squad, and they go on missions. And it's sort of like instead of watching Band of Brothers sitting on the couch, you're in the Band of Brothers episodes. So these are examples of things that happen at the end. There's a lot of sound, explosions, people freaking out. But we don't just stop there. We expose people to the things that people with PTSD report haunt them. We deliver coping strategy training by way of a virtual mentor that's like Dexter's dad that just turns up, or the, the ghost of Christmas past that turns up in the episode. It's basically teaching a strategy for understanding your stress response and how to deal with it in the immediate moment so that it doesn't overwhelm you, reduce the chance of fear conditioning. So we've built six episodes that cover a range of challenges. We hope that by putting people through these things before they go to combat, that will reduce the, the, the incidence of PTSD at the end of treatment. Uh, I think I'm done. Thank you.